Hi, welcome back to my channel and for today's video, we will be talking about the introduction to ring theory. So for those who have been here for a very long time, thank you so much for your undying support. So if you are new to my channel, then don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. So we'll start now. So what do we mean by ring? So a ring here is a non-empty set R together with two binary operations, usually denoted by these symbols, such that the following are satisfied. First is it should be an abelian group. So the R plus is an abelian group. So if you want to know what an abelian group is, you might want to check on the thumbnail down here. And um, number two is the this operation is associative. And then number three, the left and right distributive laws are satisfied. So that means given that you have um, A, B, C in your R, A with that one, this will hold. And um, you have A plus B, then C on the outside. So you'll have this one. So this thing here holds. That's it. Now observe that um, it is a requirement for a ring here that um, with respect to the operation in plus here, it should be a billion group. That means it's commutative. However, when we take with this operation, it need not to be a commutative. But in the event that this thing here is um, commutative, so that means um, AB is the same as BA for every A and B in R, then we call this as commutative ring. Now, if the ring R contains an element um, with this symbol such that 1R times A is the same as A times 1R, and that's A for every A in R, then R is said to be a ring with identity. So we have the following remarks here. First remark says that 1R is also used to denote an identity map. So your identity map here maps from R to R. Okay. Number two, the additive identity in R is denoted by zero. And number three, if A is in R and your N is a positive integer, then a and a is the same as a plus a plus up until a and there are n number of a so that's n summons so one classic example of a ring is the set of integers um this is very um this is pretty obvious in the sense that um Back in the previous video, like you want to check on the thumbnail down here, that this is an, an abelian group with respect to addition. So meaning to say, um, Z together with the addition is abelian group. So um, condition one um, for being a ring is satisfied. Also, um, associativity for this multiplication holds in Z. Observe that if you have elements A, B, C, which are integers, these will hold. That's it. Of course, the distributive uh, property also holds here because if you have integers like this, we have this one here. So this holds in Z, which implies that Z here is a ring. Z here is also a commutative ring. Well, this is pretty obvious in the sense that uh, you cannot find any objection for this. Like, um, say, for example, you have integers 3 and 4. 
the the product of three and four is twelve. That's the same as the product of four and three. So they're commutative, and you cannot think of any number at which when we when you try to commute, they do they do have the different answers. So therefore, z here is a basic commutative ring. In fact, this is just a trivial example. Let's try cons to consider another example here. We have these. Um, R square bracket X to be the set containing A sub N X to the N plus A sub N minus 1 X to the N minus 1 plus up until um, A sub 1 X plus A sub 0 such that your AI is in R. So this is actually pretty obvious. And then, in fact, this is called a polynomial, uh, a real polynomial. And this is actually a polynomial ring. Now, um, if you notice, if you pick uh, f of x and um, g of x, then if you're going to get the sum of it, that's also a polynomial. If you subtract that, that's also polynomial. If you multiply um, f of x times g of x, you're also getting a polynomial. And in fact, um, uh, given that your f of x here equals a n, x to the n plus a n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, plus up until a sub 1 x plus a sub 0. The inverse of f of x, you take the negative for that, you get a n x to the n minus a n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, um, minus that until a 1 x minus a sub 0. This is actually the addit additive inverse of f. And also, the additive identity of your polynomial, real polynomial, is actually, you can consider it zero. Because, of course, this is a constant polynomial. And then, the multiplicative identity, um, that's one. And also, if you multiply f of x times uh, g of x, that's the same as g of x times f of x. So implying that this uh, polynomial ring is also commutative. We will soon end up on um, next videos from now that we will be able to discuss a polynomial ring. So let's just focus first on the basic introduction for um, the ring theory in this uh, video. So before we end this video, we will discuss first with the theorem that opens a lot of discussion for the next videos that we will be dealing here in this abstract algebra series. The theorem says here that if you're given with R, a ring here, then for every A, B in R, 0A is the same as A0, which is the same as 0. Second is, this will also hold. That's negative A times b, you'll get a times negative b, and that's the same as negative of a times b. And then these two negative becomes this one here, and then this will also hold, uh, provided your n is an element of the positive integers. Summations here are these. So let's try to prove first um, number one. So number one here is 0a is the same as a zero that's zero observe that uh zero a i can write that as zero plus zero a of course that's um zero is the same as zero plus zero by right distributive law i'll have zero a plus zero a so this is by right distributive law so what's the implication here Due to the uniqueness of the identity element with respect to addition, so I have this equality here, that one, I would get um, 0 times A is 0. Okay, so we'll try to prove number 2. Number 2 here says that this is negative A, B, that's the same as A, negative B, and that's the same as negative A, B. Now observe that a b plus negative a b. I can write that down as a plus negative a b. So this is um right distributive law, right? So what happened is a plus negative a that's the same as 
0 times b. And by number 1, when it is multiplied by 0, the result is 0. Therefore, negative a, b is the same as negative of a, b. Simply because this is the uniqueness of the inverse. Similar rules follow with this as well. If you have a, b plus a, negative b, and then you'll jump into conclusion that uh, this is the same as this. For number 3, that's negative a, negative b, and that's the same as a, b. So observe that by number 2, um, negative a, negative b, um, that's equal to negative of a, negative b. I can write this down as negative of negative of a, b. And that's the same as a, b. So we're done with number 3. Okay, so before I'll prove with number four, um, I'll prove first number five. So we will prove this number five by the induction on N and M. So let's start first with the initial condition. So that's N equals one and M equals one. So if N and M are equal to one, then I have A1 um, times B1. That's the same as A1, B1. And it's satisfied trivially. So assume the formula holds. So let's assume the formula holds for every k less than or equal to n. And of course, we work as well on the induction of m. So we will use this one for every l less than or equal to m. So that means our goal here is to show um, that it also holds for k equals n plus 1 and l equals m plus 1. So this will also hold. So let's try to solve this here now. I have the summation of ai i from 1 to m, uh, n plus 1. And I have a summation of bj, and that's j from 1 to m plus 1. Um, observe that um, I can write this one here, this thing here. I can write that as um, the summation of ai, i from 1 to n. So that means I exclude the n plus 1. So in this case, I would add a sub n plus 1. And similar um, fashion, I also have this one here, bjj from 1 to m and so i will add bj i'm sorry it should be b m plus one so that's b sub m plus one okay so if you notice this is actually a uh, binomial form so i would have if i'm gonna multiply that i have the summation of a i i from one to n times the summation of bj j from one to m and then I'm going to multiply, uh, I have a sub n plus 1 summation of bj, j from 1 to m, plus the summation of a i, i from 1 to n, times b m plus 1. And I will also have a n plus 1, b m plus 1. And observe that I can write this as the sum of the double sum of a i b j j from 1 to m i from 1 to n and i have here a n plus 1 summation of b j plus um the summation of a i um i from 1 to n b m plus 1 plus a n 1, bm plus 1. Now observe that if I'm going to expand them, these are actually the expansion combination. If I'm going to write this as a i b j, your j is from 1 to m plus 1, and your i is equal to 1 to n times, uh, to the n plus 1. So therefore we have proven the claim. So now that we've shown the proof for number five, we'll go back to number four. However, if you notice on number four, this one here, this um, number four is just a special case of number five. That is when your a1 equals a2 up until 
a n and that's the same as a and um your b that's uh b1 equals b2 and till you get bm and that's the same as b and so if you take the special special case for m equals 1 and n equals 1 it's actually now the number 4 here that's it so that's all for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. So this is the introduction for ring theory. So we will continue with uh, uh, this abstract algebra series. Thank you. And um, if you have any questions and clarifications, just uh, don't hesitate to comment down there. Have a great day to you.